Today's video has been sponsored by Include Design, creators of the Lap Snap. Hello, my wonderful friends, and welcome back to another video. I hope you are doing so well. Today's video, we are going to be doing disability etiquette because I think the non disabled community could do with a little education, don't you? Mm -hmm. If you think so too, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and also share it, my friends share it into the big wide world so that people can educate themselves. I'm gonna be talking about disability accommodations, why we have them, what they're used for, who should be using them, and just why they're there. The aim of this video is to highlight these accommodations, highlight what is correct and maybe what is not correct to make the world a much easier, enjoyable place for disabled and non-disabled people to live harmonious. <laughs> the first thing that I'm going to be covering is one of the most important things that I need when I go out for the day, and that is an accessible toilet. Judith Human or Huffman, or H I don't know how to say her name, I'm so sorry. She said many years ago, if I have to feel thankful for an accessible bathroom every time I go out, then when am I ever going to feel included in society? And you know what? Every time I use an accessible bathroom that I'm able to actually get into and use, I'm thankful. So I think we have a little way to go, don't you? But why do we have accessible bathrooms or toilets? And who should be using them? Here we are in a lovely accessible toilet or bathroom. As you can see, there are sanitary bins, there are grab rails that I need to use to transfer safely onto the toilet. The toilet is at DDA height, which makes it nice and easy for me to transfer onto. There's even a mirror where I can see myself. The basin is at the correct height so I can wash my hands and actually get under the sink. There's a little um, shelf up there which is great for people who are doing any bowel programs or uh, catheters. It's a bit high though, which is a bit annoying. Toilet roll is at a good height and also the cord is dangling, which is what we like to see. I also believe that this yellow bin behind me is the biohazard bin. Unfortunately, there's no sharps box in here, which is for needles, but sometimes in accessible toilets, you will see a sharps box as well. Aside from being larger, as you can see, there are many accessibility features that disabled people need to use the bathroom safely. Taking advantage of these toilets could lead to a disabled person having a nasty accident. Accessible toilets must be kept clear at all times. They are not for stock or or unnecessary items, making it really hard for us to move around in our wheelchairs. There are also many other underlying health conditions, chronic illnesses and disabilities where you may not have a mobility aid, but you may still need to use the accessible tools. Accessible toilets are not for the extra leg room or because you're embarrassed to have a sh** in the other stalls, so you want to do it in the more private, concealed, accessible stall. They are not your personal sex dungeon, and they are not a changing room for you and your girlfriends to get ready on a night out. These are for people who have disabilities, chronic illnesses, or underlying health conditions who need to use them. So, you know, rule of thumb, you know if you need to use that bathroom, you know if you don't need to use that bathroom. So please use it correctly. Accessible parking, just as heated as the toilets. We have accessible parking. They are placed nearer to the building or nearer to the shopping center than the other parking spaces. That's because we're disabled and we may not be able to walk very well or at all and find it very, very hard to move around. There are also many other underlying health conditions, chronic illnesses and disabilities where you may not have a mobility aid, but you may still need to use the accessible parking spaces and have an accessible parking badge. Remember, disability doesn't discriminate anybody. Anybody can be made disabled at any age and at any time in their life within a blink of an eye. So please don't judge people who don't look disabled for parking there, but have a parking badge. Now, these accessible parking spaces, they're marked out with a big 
big blue sign with a little wheelchair person in there. So you can't miss it. So when you say... Oh. Sorry, I didn't realise. We know you're lying. They also have hashlings lines either side to make the parking spaces extra wide. This is so that disabled people can open their door fully to get their wheelchair up to transfer in and out of the car safely or to put down a ramp. So please don't be a d and park on those hashling lines. It's very inconvenient, it's dangerous and it can lead to disabled people having to wait out in the rain for your privileged ass to come back and move your car. So please don't park there. This portion of the video has been sponsored by Include Design, creators of the lap snap. Now you've all seen how I shop for groceries in my wheelchair. Take a look up here. And usually I use a big, awkward, heavy basket. But thanks to the lap snap, I don't have to. And here it is, a collapsible carry-all designed for all wheelchair users in mind. There's a really handy strap that goes around your waist or it can go around your neck, which keeps the basket really secure and it just doesn't feel like it's gonna go anywhere. I love the fact that it has a privacy cover on it to keep all your items safe and secure and away from crying eyes. No more having to worry about the basket falling off my lap. When I'm trying to reach the high up items. Something else which I love about this carry all is that there's a handy pocket for your wallet and your phone and your keys right at the back here. The award winning lap snap has been made in the US, including the waterproof, easy clean fabric, which was produced by a non profit creating 2,500 jobs for disabled people and those facing employment barriers. Putting disabled people first in the design process, the lap snap has been developed to empower people with disabilities to live a more independent life. Available only in the US, that they are looking to expand in the near future. Plenty of room for all my essentials and thanks to the cushioning underneath here it's really really comfortable on my lap as you know i'm really weight conscious when it comes to my wheelchair i don't want to be putting things permanently on my wheelchair that are going to be adding weight and this is what i love about the lap snap it adds no permanent weight to your wheelchair it weighs about three pounds and it can hold a capacity of about 55 pounds so much easier I love using my lap snap for shopping, but it's so versatile it can be used around the house, work, school, college, gardening, the possibilities are Thanks endless. Thanks to the lap snap, it has made shopping so much easier and more convenient for me. No more having to worry about taking back a big heavy metal basket and a more convenient clasp for people with upper mobility issues is under development. I have left a link in the description. Go and check out Include Design creators of the lap snap. Sometimes when you go out and about shopping, you may see accessible changing rooms for you to try on clothes before you go home. These are for people with limited mobility or with disabilities. Hopefully, and not always the case, these changing rooms should have grab rails and a transfer seat in them. And sometimes, if they're feeling really fancy, it may have an emergency pull cord for if you get stuck in a dress. <laughs> I'm not speaking from personal experience. If you do work in a shop, don't put your stock in there. There are people with disabilities who do like to go out shopping, who do like to try on clothes, and when you have to embarrassingly have to take out all of that stock that you've conveniently put in there, it really, really does make us quite cross. Sometimes, if we're lucky, disabled people have accessible tills in shops, but quite often those accessible tills, <laughs> we don't use them that often, so they will put a load of stock or junk on there, making them impossible to use. So please don't put all of your junk and stock there because disabled people do like to go out shopping and using the accessible till makes it a lot easier for us. Nearly every shop I went into the other day with my mum, I was up to here on the counter and the card machine was 
right up here, which I couldn't even see. So please, if you are a shop owner or you work in a shop and you don't have a disability and you are learning something today, please be aware that disabled people do find it very, very hard to access the non-accessible tills. Something that was introduced in America around about the 1970s is something called a dropped curb or a curb cut. Now these curb cuts are cut away so that we can go up and down the pavement or the sidewalk with our mobility aids or with our wheelchair. They can also have raised spots on them to alert people with visual impairments that they are heading up to a road. If those curb cuts aren't there, we may have to do a wheelie to try and jump up or jump down the curb, or some people in wheelchairs can't even access the pavement at all. Now, what I find really frustrating is people will park over the dropped curbs, even when they have little lines on them to say that you shouldn't park there. If you park over those dropped curbs, disabled people can't cross the road safely. Also, while we're talking about parking over cut curbs, think about where you're parking. If you're parking on the pavement, again, can a wheelchair get by? Can a buggy get by? Can a person with a visual impairment or a guide dog get by? If not, they may have to go in the road, which can be very dangerous, especially as I'm really quite small in my wheelchair and I'm not very visible. Another thing which is really, really infuriating is when people actually stand and stop on the cut curbs. that I wanted to talk about is the phone zombies. Be aware of people around you when you're on your phone. The amount of people that have almost ended up in my lap because they're too busy on their phone is ridiculous now. Whilst we're talking about the pavement and the dropped curbs, if you are living in a residential area and you need to put your bins out, when you put them out, just be aware. Do you think if you put your bin in the middle of the sidewalk or the pavement, a wheelchair or a buggy or a power chair or even someone with visual impairment and, a, and an assistance dog or a guide dog, have you left enough room? Be a little considerate and think about maybe another place where you can leave your bin. It's just about having a little bit of education, being aware of these issues that you might not have even been aware of and showing a bit of kindness and compassion. Did you know in some hotels they will offer accessible rooms? These are fantastic for people with disabilities. Welcome to my accessible hotel room in the assembly in Covent Garden. So on first impressions, as you can see, the doorway is nice and wide. There is a spy hole at my height and non-disabled height. And there is a nice wide entrance hall. And as we go in, you can see there's a mirror that I can see myself in. There is an emergency cord that's just about hanging that I can call for if I need any help. The bed is at a good height for me to transfer in and out of. And again, there's lots of room for me to get to the bed. If there wasn't enough room, then it would be too crowded and pokey in here. And then into the bathroom, which again has a really nice doorway, has the DDA grab rails in it, and I can just roll in really easily. You can see the bathroom is really, really nice and spacious, so I can move around easily. The sink is at a really nice height for me to brush my teeth. I can even see myself in the mirror. And there's also grab rails either side as well. We've also got another emergency cord, which I will need if I ever get into trouble on the toilet. Unfortunately, this one has been tied up, but that's a story for another day. We've got all of the grab rails around the toilet, which I need. And then heading over to the shower. It's a zero entry shower, which is fantastic. I can just roll in. There is a shower chair. Obviously I don't shower in this chair, but it has all of the necessary grab rails that I need to shower safely. And again, there is an emergency cord slightly tied up, but there is an emergency cord 
which you wouldn't find in a standard room. So this is why we have disability access rooms, which are for people with disabilities. If I'm unable to book a, an accessible room, I can't shower safely, I can end up really, really hurting myself, and it could be really, really dangerous. So if you don't need these rooms, please don't book them. It's not a luxury. For me, it's a necessity. The other day I was in Primark, I got into the lift and a lady walked into the lift as well and I said, oh, what floor would you like? I, I'm just being lazy. <laughs> okay, I didn't need to know that, whatever. If a store is busy and you don't need to use the lift, please don't use the lift. Leave it for the priority of people with buggies and wheelchairs and people with invisible disabilities may need to use the lift as well or people with mobility aids. You know if you need to use it and that's absolutely fine but please just give priority to the people who do need to use it. By abusing disability access requirements you could actually be ruining someone's day. I'll only be a minute mate, cheers. I think every disabled person has encountered it. After watching this video, please share it so that we can educate people. I have tried to do this video as sensitively as possible. I understand that there are people with chronic illnesses, invisible disabilities, and all kinds of disabilities. I really hope that you have found this video useful today. Let me know what do you find most infuriating that you wish people knew about your disability and your accommodations. And remember, these accommodations, they're not luxuries. Trust me, they're not luxuries. They are there to even the playing field out with non-disabled people to make our lives just a little bit easier. But when, when non-disabled people take advantage of these accommodations, it's just making it even harder. I hope you've learned something today. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Bye.